I want to cover what I think went wrong with the San Diego Padres. People may say they choke. Other people may say they were cocky and they just started to lose. But I'm going to give you my opinion on what went wrong. Because cockiness, it's not if you're cocky, it's the momentum that you're carrying, the fans that you're carrying to support you, even though you're cocky. I'll give an example. The Chicago Bears, they were cocky enough to make a video a singing video. I'm not sure it was during the playoffs or before the playoffs, but they were cocky and they won the Super Bowl. The 1986 Mets team, that's my favorite team. They were cocky in 85 after they lost against the St. Louis Cardinals to let them know that they were going to go back to the playoffs and they're going to win it. 1986, they won the World Series. Backfire, we could say that 1988, the Opian Ace won the Mets, but they faced the Dodgers. They were cocky. They were rooting for the Mets. You could tell they were cocky. I, I'm not sure if it was David Henderson or David, that, David Arthur. Plus, they had the Bass Brothers. They had a whole squad, and they lost against the Dodgers. You can see it in many sports. Cockiness sometimes wins, sometimes loses. Sometimes you're rooting for that team because they're cocky and they're, they're facing like the Dodgers, some, a team that not a lot of fans are rooting for. They're rooting for, but if you're not a Dodger fan, you're not rooting for them. Now, I'm going to tell you what I think went wrong. You can see the momentum going with the Padres. Even when the fans in Dodger Stadium were throwing all these debris, items at them, the momentum was with the Padres. The last team to get a forfeit was the Dodgers against the Cardinals. I believe, I'm not sure how many years ago, but they got forfeit because they were throwing items to the stadium inside the field. I saw that the Padres had that momentum. We already know they lost two games. They got shut down. They got shut down against all relief pitching on the game. What I think was, was shifting against them is that people, even though they like the cockiness, there's a borderline of the cockiness for some people, and it started shifting. We'll see that Manny Machado throwing the ball and Dave Robinson accusing him. Because in my opinion, I don't think Manny Machado did it intentionally to harm nobody. But the one thing that actually I believe that shifted it was that Ken Rosato, I, I, I know I'm saying his name wrong, said that the Padres are not getting, are not accepting interviews. This is after he wrote a bad article about them. If you're going to write a bad article on me, I'm not going to talk to you. But for some reason, Kim Rosatel, The Athletics, I'm not sure what network, I'm not sure if it's TVS, TNT, Fox, whatever. He has all those people supporting him, the media supporting him, and it shifted. I think that's what caused the shift. Now, this reminds me of 1992, Deion Sanders. If you don't know what happened between him and Tim McCarver, I do recommend look at videos and try to do your own personal research. Because at that time, I thought it was inappropriate by Deion Sanders. What happened is, I believe it was at the playoffs, Deion Sanders was celebrating and Tim McCarver wanted to interview him. This is after Tim McCarver said that Deion Sanders is a two-sport player. He was a two-sport Falcons and the Braves. Both teams from Georgia, I believe they both played in Atlanta, Atlanta Falcons, Atlanta Braves, but sometimes a team says they're from Atlanta, but they're not really from Atlanta. They're from a little suburb around it, but you get the picture. Tim McCarver said, breach a contract and other things about Deion Sanders. He tried to interview him on the playoffs, a celebration. And I believe Deion Sanders has his little goggles celebrating. He poured the champagne on Tim McCarver. And Tim McCarver said, you're a classy man or something like that. He took the lines. Basically, he's not appreciated what Deion Sanders is doing. And Deion Sanders didn't want that interview. I don't remember what he said, but instead of portraying him as a bad guy, the county player, and so on, people turned on Tim McCarver. For me, Tim McCarver was a great announcer. Uh, I'm not sure how long after that, he was covering uh, World Series playoffs. But he never mentioned Deion Sanders after that. So people that don't know Deion Sanders, Deion Sanders is a two-sport athlete, like I mentioned, Falcons and Braves. And I'm not sure if he skipped game three 
but he was going to fly from on a helicopter, I believe so, from the Falcons game to the Braves game, or he was going to miss that game. And that's why Tim McCarver wrote what he wrote and said the things that he said of Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders didn't want to talk to him after that. It's like Manny Machado, Tafis, and the Padres, they don't want to talk to Ken. But I do understand the players that do that because why am I going to talk to somebody that is talking bad about me? And the difference is that with Deion Sanders, he has support. With Manny Machado, Tatis, and the Padres, they didn't have that support. The media is getting more powerful throughout time. And I felt that was the final straw that I think that all these things that the Padres were getting from the Machado, of course, the Dodgers, and so on, it shifted. It shifted the momentum. And that's what I think happened. And that's all I got. I hope the Padres make it next year. Uh, I'll make another video on that because they got free agents. I'm not sure they're gonna cut or they're gonna uh, they're gonna reduce or put more money on their budget for next year. But that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you.